Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is F1 Fanatics. So guys, we went to Brands Hatch yesterday and the plan was to vlog for you, so to have some footage of us talking there at Brands Hatch, but the wind was kind of really gusty. Any audio that we got was kind of really kind of annoying and kind of muffled by wind. So what I thought is we've got a load of footage from the race yesterday looking at obviously the W series, the DTM and obviously looking at the Lotus and the mini series, mini series as well there. So I'm just going to talk over voiceover. Hope you enjoy guys. Let's get into it. So guys, here we are arriving at Pranzach, nice and bright and early in the morning. We got there at 6.30, maybe a little too keen, but we're eager beavers here at F1 Fanatics. So yeah, guys, what we'll be focusing on in this main uh, first section is the W Series. There's obviously, we are F1 Fanatics, so massive interest in the single-seater championships here. So yeah, if you can look, that was... Uh, a version of Emma Kimmelainen's car on display and it was really good so we got there early doors it was really quiet we got to go through the W series paddock so you could see all the engineers here uh, all the cars of all the uh, drivers there were out on display um, yeah you saw them working away putting the tires on making those last few adjust adjustments ahead of qualifying and I think this is an amazing thing obviously I haven't been to uh, any Formula 3 regional races or international races or F2 well obviously F2 follows the F1 circuit so it's difficult to get this access anyway um, but it was just amazing to kind of get this uh, behind the scenes access and see them working on the cars and yeah really have a look in detail at that Tatus F3 T318 um, so yeah then we were up in the grandstand here guys um, this is qualifying seen the cars go around obviously we had uh, Jamie Chadwick secure pole in qualifying fantastic and um, doing just what she needed to do uh, to make sure that she brought home the W Series title and then Alice Powell she finished um, second uh, well qualified second and she was uh, very frustrated we um we saw her physically like beating the wheel because she was so desperate to get kind of pole in her home Grand Prix. It meant a lot. And then the uh, British drivers kind of locked out one, two, three positions um, because Esme Hawkey uh, got a uh, qualified third place, which was really positive for us. So now, guys, we're going to come up to after qualifying. We were back in the paddock and we got really close access. So I'll just let you have a look and a listen here. So yeah, you can hear those um, T318s whirring away with their um, 1.8 litre turbocharged engines. Just hear those pistons cracking away. Um, but yeah, it was amazing having such close access to the drivers there. Obviously, we were positioned in front of Emma Kimmeline and there. Uh, she's got a fantastic helmet as well. I think there's a picture coming up just in close detail. I really liked uh, the kind of design of her helmet there. Um, obviously earlier you saw Jamie Chadwick uh, earlier in the clip was being interviewed obviously being congratulated on securing pole position but it was so amazing to kind of just be so close to obviously these drivers and look at the cars just after qualifying um, seeing how they were interacting with each other and uh, later on I think we see the race engineers come in as well and that was fantastic to see them kind of having their little debriefs uh, yeah, there's Marty Garcia over there. She really struggled all weekend. Um, Brands Hatch certainly wasn't her favourite track. Obviously, she's had a uh, been 18 years old, um, so young, so much kind of potential, Marty Garcia. But she, yeah, she really struggled here weekend. I think her race finish was um, mid table. So yeah, not the best of weekends from her. She she didn't actually look the happiest here. And then then we move back on to kind of pictures. We got a Fabian Wolfen's uh, helmet there. Then, like I said, here is Emma Kimmelainen's helmet. Very nice design with the feather wings there. Then me just trying to be a little bit artistic for you guys. There again, another picture of Marta Garcia. Emma kept looking kind of deep in thought after qualifying, but she was very pleased, seemed pleased with the fourth position. They were getting ready there because the uh, drivers helped push their 
uh, cars back for the engineers to work on to just kind of all set up in place getting ready for the race later on the day. Jamie Chadwick looking very pleased with herself there after securing pole position. Obviously a lot of pictures of Emma Kimmerlinen here because uh, well, she was the closest driver to me. So yeah, again here's a clip. Like I said the engineers come in, you can hear here they were cooling down the engines, bringing out the fans um, really interesting then the race engineers coming out with their laptops as well having a chat with their drivers ask them how they thought it went uh, moving on guys and so obviously us being F1 fans the RB7 from 2011 Sebastian Vettel's championship winning car was on display and David Coulthard gave it a few laps round Brands Hatch and that was fantastic to see and uh, warning in advance if your volume is high I recommend that you turn it down because I'm going to insert a video clip of the RB7 racing past us and what a sound guys. And yeah, later on in the day we were able to get really close up having a look. Uh, yeah, looking at the diffuser there, looking how narrow that rear wing is compared to the modern day car and just looking at the side pods there as well. That was really fantastic to see that RB7 as well but moving on to the race now so obviously yeah you saw Chadwick there on pole, Powell 2, Hawkey 3, um, Kimmelainen 4 and then Bicycle Visa she was 5th position and then looking back at lead grid and I'm now going to switch off guys because now this is the start of the race and it is also kind of seeing Alex Powell lead later on As you saw there guys, Esme Hawkey had done a fantastic qualifying position, getting in third and then she had that kind of full start there luring forward, I think she stalled the car as well, and terrible, and then to make things worse for her, because she was actually overtaken and making great progress up the grid, um, but she then had a drive through penalty uh, later on in the race, so that really just compounded her and put her really at the kind of back of that mid-table grid. Uh, you can see some, uh, well, actually, I think that was Esme being overtaken there. Um, but yeah, kind of another main drama within the race, obviously after uh, Alex Powell and Emma Kimmelin and really were the drivers of the day, drove fantastic races uh, after overtaking Jamie Chadwick. Um, Miki Koyama kind of mucked up and caused that safety car there. Uh, here was Alice Powell passing the podium that she would stand atop of. And then I've got her there, you know, the chequered flag being waved as it passed by. Bajska Visa must have been kind of mixed emotions of uh, finishing third. So great podium, but obviously losing out to Jamie Chadwick in the championship. Uh, a couple of pictures there of... Uh, Perea and Jessica Hawkins who and Sabre Cook, all drivers who secured their future um, in next year's championship. There we go guys, the podium, fantastic champagne moments all round, uh, having a good time celebrating and wow, what a drive that was by Alice Powell guys. And this was just afterwards having a look, again the cars were on display, ready for you to go, you could see the marbles on the tyres there. And guys, the only way to finish the W Series is congratulations, Jamie Chadwick. What a season she had. And funnily enough, the uh, season finale at Home Grand Prix was the only race she didn't finish on the podium, guys. So um, it was just fantastic season, fantastic first season of the W Series, guys. And uh, I think it really is kind of highlighted that there are talented female drivers out there and uh, yeah, they should be getting the exposure as well. It'll be interesting to see how many go on to F3 and F2 championships and really push for F1 seats in the future. So guys, moving on to the DTM. And obviously this is the main event of the day. And uh, our first action of it is if you got there at 9, 
then you could do the pit walk. So we were queuing up outside the Paddock Hill grandstand. As you can see, very busy, very popular to go and do this. And uh, here's, here's some uh, terrible camera work for me. But uh, this is us walking uh, towards the pit. You got to walk on the uh, track. There's looking over towards the Paddock Hill bend. Um, and a couple of safety cars out on track. Um, so yeah, there's Ash. Hello, Ashley. E. Uh, and there's some Aston Martin DTM safety cars as well. Um, but yeah, guys, here we are. We are in the pits. And honestly, this is the first time that I've ever done anything like this of a pit walk. So I, I channeled my inner Ted Kravitz and uh, was enjoying walking down with the camera. So here was uh, um, Marco Whitman's car and garage. You can obviously see, yeah. All the um, engineers were still working on it because obviously qualifying was right after the pit walk. So it was amazing to kind of have a look at all these. We were just kind of walking through, having a look at each garage uh, in the DTM. Bar the Aston Martins, which is uh, frustrating, all the uh, drivers have their own kind of separate livery and sponsors on the cars. So it makes it pretty easy to spot them on track. Then they have another cool feature that um, when we get onto the pictures of qualifying... I'll uh, go into what I thought was quite a cool idea. But yeah, here's us just kind of walking uh, along. That's a BMW driver through there. The BMWs actually did quite poorly over the weekend in qualifying. Um, the Audis absolutely dominated the weekend. But that is nice blue livery there. Obviously, <laughs> not following DTM that closely it was more just kind of a learning experience i kind of done my research and looked into it a little bit before but learning the drivers and learning the teams and stuff obviously the main three constructors in dtm are aldi and bmw have been regulars and then this is aston martin's first year within the sport with paul de resta obviously driving for them yeah here you are guys just still walking up and it yeah amazing how this kind of unparalleled access being so close just watching the engineers at work seeing what they were doing kind of putting all those last touches to the cars for qualifying this is jamie green's car one of the british drivers on the grid um yeah look at them just kind of putting the bonnet back onto the car uh like i said putting the finishing touches one of the audi team drivers there was yeah oh Duval's car and Duval did very well in qualifying as well and I think he finished within the top five in the race as well actually he might have finished third so I could have been doing him misjustice there as well um, but yeah it was such an amazing experience if any of you guys get to go to one of these small race meets obviously DTM is still like a major event but small compared to the likes of F1 You've got to do something like the pit walk. It was absolutely amazing just to see everything going on first hand. <laughs> Playing Nico Muller's uh, sound on here because they were listening to some happy kind of German music. They seemed kind of very buoyant and moved uh, while they were doing their touches. They seemed the most kind of energetic out of the garages there as well. But yeah, guys, so many cars on the grid here having a look and just all the teams were busy. Uh, working away here and now we move on to the Aston Martin like I said there's Aston Martins pretty much were have the same livery and to be honest guys the Aston Martin Vantage looked such a nice car it, it for me certainly was the best looking uh, car on the grid but it's their first year taking over from Mercedes um, yeah, not entirely sure what Aston Martin's German link is here to be in the German touring cars race there. But here's uh, Paul de Resta's garage is there in Dennis. Paul de Resta's garage was absolutely rammed. Everyone wanted to kind of get a look, see his car. Obviously being a former F1 driver, very popular F1 pundit as well. Um, yeah, it was great to see. Um, so here's just kind of a little bit of sound in the background. Uh, seeing Frins's car being worked on one of the Audi drivers I think also he'd been driving in Formula E as well correct me if I'm wrong guys so I thought we might be nice watch there but you hear the engine going a little bit as well but just doing a test blowing some cold air into the engine there probably checking uh, that everything is working okay then we're obviously leaving the uh, pit 
garage here, every making our way walking off was fantastic. Like I said, seeing everything close hand. We were in that grandstand, we were in the middle in the back row, so having quite a great seat uh, view there. Obviously, you saw pictures from there. These are some of our pictures as well. So, a picture of the rest of this garage there on Habsburg, a couple of the Aston Martin drivers, and then uh, Rene Rast's car as well, the race winner from today. Then we kind of uh, detoured. We <laughs> We kind of just were wandering around and we're not entirely sure whether we were meant to be here. But this was kind of behind the um, scenes. This was all the team trucks that they transport everything in behind the pit garages. Obviously, um, you're getting a look at that back strike as well. Yeah, as you can see, that is literally us looking in at the back garages there, guys. So, yeah, we were pretty behind the scenes access here at F1 Fanatics. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so there's one of the drivers just proving how behind the scenes. We could have gone up and said to him, wasn't sure who he was. As I said, not too familiar on the DTM grid, other than obviously the F former F1 names with Timo Glock and Paul De Resta on the track. Um, but yeah, it was, was amazing just kind of... I, yeah, you wouldn't get this sort of... Unless you were a person of interest or got that sort of access in one you just didn't get this sort of access on an F1 weekend so it's the real bonus of going to one of these kind of small race weekends and um, yeah just having a look behind it was yeah just absolutely fantastic just yeah giving you views of the back straight here guys was absolutely um, superb those those screens will come in um, I think I got some pictures of it in the race. So basically, those screens were in the distance. So great if you were parked on the inner track, but yeah, if if you were trying to figure out who was where on the grid and trying to read the lineups, if you didn't know the liveries, it was really difficult. I had to take pictures on my camera, then zoom in on the picture to try and figure out who was where. But yeah, guys, then we kind of moved on and uh, moved on into watching the qualifying from the grandstand and so yeah there's a picture of one of the Aston Martins looking a very nice car and yeah fantastic with those kind of so the DTM cars are what they call silhouette cars so they are road cars obviously you can buy the Aston Martin Vantage as a road car you can buy the BMW M4 as a road car and you can buy the Audi RS5 as a road car because that's a coupe but Obviously, they are massively vamped up. They've got loads of winglets on there, loads of aerodynamic upgrade packages, um, the rear wings as well. So, <laughs> very different to the M4 or Audi that you'd go and buy in store if you were getting it at your local dealer. Um, but yeah, if you can see, guys, there, the kind of numbers. I see the next picture might be a bit clearer. Yeah, so you see the numbers there. So this is this is really fantastic. So in the back of the window, if you didn't know where someone was qualifying or where they were in the race, the number was signifying um, where they were in position, which, well, really useful as cars are flying around. Um, the only downside to that, obviously, with it not displaying the driver number, is on the kind of wheel rim, was a very small number so you kind of almost squinting trying to figure out who is who if like us and um, we didn't necessarily know the DTM uh, drivers too well uh, so trying to figure out the liveries looking through the max show program going ah oh, there but anyway guys I'll shut up now because this is the start of the race and uh, you can see them as they get kicked off so engines kick in now Uh, as you can see there guys, Rene had a really terrible start, was a little massively frantic, see, not so overtaking, not too many great starts, but Rene managed to uh, get his lead back, he actually controlled it, the Aldis controlled the race as well, they'd had a really strong race day, obviously Marco Whitman in the BMW had won the day before, but Rene Rass pretty much confirmed his title, because I think Nico Miller, who is his uh, nearest rival, the Swiss driver, um, had to has to win five out of the last six races. So not impossible, um, but makes it pretty tough for him to win. But yeah, here's Lozling. 
loads of close on track action and um, overtakes the rear a couple of spin outs as well including uh, there was a really terrible pit stop oh well actually i'll let you have a look here uh, this is one of the pit stops see so sorry about the shoddy camera work in terms of it being a bit shaky but yeah just thought it was great to kind of have a look at the shakes and here's nico muller racing through there was a battle between um duval and uh who was that Duval and Frins uh, fighting there, but Frins managed to win that battle on the podium was Rene Rast, uh, Nico Miller and uh, Frins as well. So it was a good showing by the Audi drivers. Um, coming up, guys, uh, that was a really nice livery, actually, South African driver there. But, yeah, coming up here, picture of the screen. Yeah, this is what I mean. If you guys can read that, then well done to you but yeah we had no chance of trying to figure out who was where uh, last lap sign up there because it's a 55 minute race plus one lap in the DTM so therefore they get the last lap sign out then there but there you go guys there they are on the podium the three Aldi drivers getting their champagne moments in and then guys after that we move into uh, the other kind of two series of the day and that was the Lotuses and the Minis. Here we go, guys. Then here are the Lotuses. So going back to the start of the day, again, when we were looking at the W Series paddock, also behind there was the Lotuses paddock and the Mini paddocks as well. So it was really fantastic to get up and close. Um, so now we're trying to kind of do it. So from what I understood, there were kind of four classes in the Lotuses and there were three classes in the minis, which meant that there were a hell of a lot of cars on track, and there were a hell of a lot of cars um, just kind of trying to figure out what to do. You could not follow the race whatsoever. Um, bless the guy on the kind of loudspeaker. He was trying his best to try and inform everyone, but really loved how uh, personalised the minis were. They had some really cool liveries. I think you kind of saw back there, but yeah, here's a trying to kind of simulate there were just so many cars on track um, that's going up obviously after completing the paddock hill bend which the minis at times because they've got such a kind of small wheelbase and um, were almost drifting around so it was a little bit like fast and furious at times um but yeah was absolutely mental but the lotuses were awesome to see as well some really nice liveries on the uh lotuses quite a nice kind of orange livery here as well um but yeah they were super quick super loud as well especially this one um was very loud out there lovely kind of almost classic lotus livery as well the kind of black and gold really nice job that they've done on the car there um so yeah obviously you have those kind of more sporty ones you had this kind of more coupéed with kind of the driver cage on top as well this one a little bit more closer to the road car but obviously vamped up still uh with the spoilers in as well to kind of help with the aerodynamic package um but overall was really fantastic to watch it really added to the day it was great support to the w series and the dtm um yeah like i said the only downside but i suppose you've got the competitive side of the w series you've got the competitive edge of the dtm um and because of the level of racing it is, it makes sense that you have to race classes at the same time. But trying to figure out who was in which class, who was leading which class, was, um, yeah, absolutely chaotic. Lovely livery there of the green and yellow as well. And, oh, yeah, that number one, uh, wonderful car. Um, so loud, so loud, actually getting up to the volume of the DTM cars at times so yeah it proves how kind of vamped up that car was but this was we just kind of found the spot uh, just behind the pit straight so this was me just literally holding down the clicker on my phone on my um, camera and just catching as many cars as I could and then got them pitching round going down that corner after Druids uh, like you can see it's chaos so much action happening on track uh, cars passing each other all the time so um, yeah if you'd love overtaking then you would absolutely love this because cars were getting overtaken left right and centre and the Lotus say oh 
yeah, this was in the race that got it red flagged for about 15, 20 minutes. One of the cars was on fire, um, which, yeah, was pretty crazy. And you can see this is the paddock hill bend and such a steep kind of decline on that paddock hill bend. Um, but, yeah, it was mental. And this was the last race of the day, guys. The minis. Look at them racing round. Absolutely going mental on paddock hill. There's Ashley as well filming. And we got them absolutely flying through there into Druids where... Yeah, guys, was was amazing, and it was a great finish to what had been an absolutely great day at Brandsatch. Um, really enjoy, would really recommend it. They've got loads of stuff going on over. I think next weekend they've got the uh, Festival Italia as well. So if you're a big Ferrari and Alfa Romeo fan, definitely get yourself along. But to round off, guys, what a race and um, by Alice Powell, fantastic victory for her. Um, Emma Kimmelainen and Bajska Visca finishing the podium. First W Series race that I've watched live um, was was a fantastic race, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Really excited um, to see next season as well. Uh, and next season, of course, they qualify uh, for super license points. So there can it can become a series that people can graduate straight into F1 from, which would be really interesting to see. So guys, that is it. Again, a massive congratulations on uh, Jamie Chadwick being the inaugural uh, Women's Series World Champion, the first ever. Alice Powell, what an amazing drive on the day. She was just determined to win that race. She was fantastic in qualifying, narrowly missing out on, uh, on pole position to Jamie Chadwick, but made sure she did it in the race. Fantastic to see her get her first win of the season. Another great race by Emma Kimmelainen as well. Looked like she might get Alice Powell at stages, but uh, Alice Powell was able to keep her behind. And then some consolation for Bytska Visa, who obviously finished second runner-up in the Drivers' Championship. And wow, guys, um, what a race that was. The DTM as well, fantastic. First ever time that I've seen DTM racing live. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic to watch. And like I said, guys, the Lotus and the Mini Series was absolute carnage. Wonderful kind of on-track action, the kind of petrol head scene, but absolutely not a clue what was going on. Guys, don't forget, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. Um, comment below. Were you at Brandsatch? Tell us your moments of it. Tell us your favourite moment of the day. Uh, did you enjoy our kind of roundup of proceedings from the day? Um, also, uh, comment what you think of Jamie Chadwick being the first W Series champion and what that means for kind of raising awareness for kind of female drivers and trying to, you know, see... Will they get more into the F3 cha international championships, moving into F2, and then hopefully getting into F1 as well, because it's been since the 1970s, I think, since we last had a female driver driving in F1. So we need to change that, don't we, guys? Uh, oh, we need to change that as a different thing. They need to get their own merit, but there are talented female drivers out there, so maybe raising awareness for their talent is more what we should be focusing on, guys. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, walk over, click that button, click on the bell notifications as well, because that lets you know for more videos like this. Hopefully, we'll be going to kind of more race meetups as well. You know, we cover all the F1 race weekends. Um, tomorrow coming out is our 2020 driver predictions. Obviously, you saw earlier today my reaction. Wow, Albon to Red Bull. I, I, I don't think we saw it coming. People could have predicted that it might come at the end of the season, but I don't think anyone saw it coming mid-season for Alexander Albon. Got to be good luck, and you've got to wish Pierre all the best back at Toro Rosso. Can he regain his mojo? Anyway, guys, that is it. Remember, F1 fans, keep racing.